Hi, welcome back to Missing Chemistry. This is Pirac Transatomic Radii lesson. Okay, when we look at the atomic radii of an atom, we're talking about going from the nucleus to the very edge of the atom. Now, that's pretty problematic. So you have to understand that this edge right here is kind of like fog. What I mean by that is, is that these are night tight orbits. They're kind of fuzzy. And since there's fuzzy, where is the actual end of the atom? So that presented a problem to people in how to actually measure the radii of atoms. So what they did was they took the atomic radii as a measure as the halfway distance between two nucleuses of similar atoms. So this is how we decided that we were going to do it. So what they did was they took atom one here and they took atom two here Okay. And then they measured the distance from the nucleus to the nucleus, and they split it halfway, and they call this the radii. Okay, so that's where the radii is. All right, now, but now what about the trends? Well, okay, well, first of all, the atomic radii decrease in size as they go across the periodic table. So if we start off with hydrogen here, hydrogen would be fairly large and then helium of course would be smaller now why is that happening well that's happening because as you go across the periodic table you're not increasing in energy shells but you are increasing in protons and electrons right so the protons are grabbing the electron orbits and bringing them closer to the nucleus so as you go down the periodic table, like one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven periods, right? Each period is a new shell. So the atomic radii is going to increase because you're making the sh you're making the atom larger and larger by adding more shells. So the atom gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger. So going across the periodic table, let's look at period two, these atoms would get progressively smaller. See that? And that's because you're not adding energy shells, but you're adding protons. And these protons are bringing the orbitals down. Okay? So if you look at period three, the same thing is going to happen here. Atoms are going to start shrinking in size. Just like this. However, you need to note that as you get closer to the very end, these smaller atoms are going to become larger because you're actually adding new shells as you go down. So you're actually increasing the size of the atom a tad bit there, but because of the protons, uh, it's squeezing the uh, orbits closer to the nucleus. So let's go over the trends one more time. As you go down the periodic table, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the atomic radii are going to increase because you're adding shells. As you go across the periodic table, the atomic radii is going to decrease in size because you're not adding shells, but you're adding more protons and electrons. So that interaction is going to make the nucleus have a stronger pull. It's going to pull those orbits above it closer to the nucleus. A radii is measured from the center of the atom to the very edge of the atom. The problem with finding the edge is that these are energy levels, so they're kind of fuzzy, kind of like fog. Where's the end of fog? Well, you can walk in and out of fog. That's true. But can you find the definitive edge of fog? 
why can't you define the definitive edge of a cloud? And the answer is no, because the edge is always changing. How do you find the atomic radii? Is measured as the halfway distance between two nucleuses of similar atoms. So we would take, for example, two atoms of helium. And when they're side by side, we would measure the distance from the nucleus of one helium atom to the distance of another nucleus of another helium atom and divide that in half, and that would give us the radius of the atom. Well, that's it, guys. You be snarly, and we'll see you back here at Musine Chemistry.